Got to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Magic Spoon. Be sure to go save $5 off of your first order of Magic Spoon. I'm personally in love with the cocoa, my favorite one. You should be too. Go to Magic Spoon and get your order for Magic Spoon and really the best tasting and most nutritional cereal on the market today. Zero grams of sugar. Nobody else is doing that. You won't feel guilty about eating it. It's the best cereal on the market. And listen, we eat this every day around the office here. So go over to Magic Spoon and get some of the best cereal on the market, the best cereal on the market, and save some money while you're doing it. R.C. Maxfield here for Miami Dolphins. Today, as the Dolphins lost a heartbreaker in the desert to the Raiders and Derek Carr in the fighting John Gruden's 31-28, Jacoby Brissett was the starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. And up until the fourth quarter, about midway through it in overtime, you would look at his stat line and think, well, Jacoby Brissett didn't do much. But in the end, really helped propel the Dolphins to have a chance in this one. But before we get into the recap, you tell me, what is your one-word reaction to the Dolphins' 31-28 loss at the Raiders? Again, kind of just a heartbreaking type loss for the Dolphins, who really struggled and grinded their way to get back into the end of that football game, but really just couldn't finish it off. But you love to see the fight, right? That is the word for me, fight. You saw the Dolphins fight till the very end and actually have a chance in this one. They were driving and had to settle for a Jason Sanders 50-yard field goal in overtime and then gave up a couple of big plays to the Raiders who capitalized on it and ended with a 25-yard field goal off the leg of Daniel Carlson. But overall, you love to see that fight from this team, right? Especially with your QB1 out, and now you have Jacoby Brissett in. The fight is what it's all about, and Jacoby Brissett really led the way with two really great throws. I thought... It was probably the best throw I saw all Sunday was Jacoby Brissett to Mike Kosicki on a fourth down to keep a drive going where he had to evade pressure in the pocket and threw an absolute dot to Mike Kosicki who made an unbelievable catch. And I say this jokingly, but Tua would never, right? He would never be able to do this. And I say it jokingly, but it was good to see competent quarterback play at least in the latter part of the fourth quarter and in overtime. This offense looked really solid during that part and now I know what you're going to say down in the comments RC what about the you know the first second and third quarter and midway through the fourth well that's fine but in winning time Jacoby Brissett gave you a chance to win obviously the Raiders made a couple more plays than the Dolphins but overall I thought Jacoby Brissett was actually pretty damn good today for the Dolphins did exactly what he needed to do didn't really connect on any deep shots per se had a couple opportunities to Will Fuller and I'm going to be honest, I thought it was a P.I. in overtime and Will Fuller in the end zone, but to no avail. Had some good throws, really hyper-targeted Mike Gusecki and Jalen Waddell and kept the team in the game in the long term. And unfortunately, it didn't go the Dolphins' way, 31-28. But grade it for me. Did Jacoby Brissett meet your expectations? Type Y for yes, type N for no. And when I say grade it, I mean, just think about it. Like, when you came into this, did you have a mad number in your mind for me? I just wanted him to be average, right? But I'm probably hitting that why for this just because he did meet expectations. He's a backup quarterback, right? He, he did about what I expected. When it comes down to it, a backup quarterback is normally known for dinking and dunking and really not taking shots downfield. And Jacoby Brissett did dink and dunk, but he also had a couple of shots today where he just couldn't get under it, whether that was Will Fuller, Mike Gusecki missed one as well. I saw Jalen Waddle miss one. I mean, really what it comes down to is this Dolphins offense looked a lot better today with Jacoby Brissett at the helm than they did even in week one when Tua Tungavailoa took every snap from center. And now I'm not saying that Tua Tungavailoa shouldn't be QB1, but the way that Jacoby Brissett played today, I think there might be a little bit of controversy there just in the sense that Jacoby Brissett really amplified and did what this offense needed it at the most in terms of evading pressure in the pocket, stepping up, having the arm strength to go deep. He did exactly what I expected, and even a little more so, especially in that fourth quarter and overtime. Got a shout out today, sponsor of the video, Magic Spoon. To get $5 off your order of Magic Spoon, go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins. And listen, this is probably my favorite cereal right now. I'm a big cereal guy right before bed, and it makes me feel guilty, maybe a little bloated, but Magic Spoon has eliminated that in terms of the guilt, right? Zero grams of sugar, four net carbs, and up to 14 grams of protein in the respective cereal. It's my favorite cereal right now. Personally, I'm in love with the cocoa one. Go try some for yourself over on magicspoon.com dolphins to get $5 off 
your first order of Magic Spoon. I promise you won't regret it. And listen, you'll look better doing it too. A little more Jacoby Brissett talk is uh, he went 32 for 49, 215, zero touchdowns through the air but and no interceptions. But he did have that game, well, almost tying uh, TD run there late in the game with about two, three seconds left and then obviously had that two-point conversion to Will Fuller to propel the team to overtime. I thought overall Jacoby Brissett was absolutely just electric in the last few minutes especially that Mike Kosicki pass, hyper-targeted Jalen Waddle and didn't try and do too much. He did exactly what the offense needed of him, and he kept the Dolphins in the game, and that's really all you can ask from your backup quarterback. Speaking of keeping the Dolphins in the game, the defense did just that. Again, played over 32 minutes of game action, did the Miami Dolphins defense. It seems like this is just happening every game now, but here's some highlights for the Dolphins as they – uh. Only allowed 95 rushing yards into the third quarter. Peyton Barber went above and beyond in the fourth quarter, but I thought that stood out to me because they were trying to get Peyton Barber the ball when it came to rushing the football, which sounds really, really weird. But into the third quarter, 95 rushing yards for what Peyton Barber and the Raiders offense was trying to do, I thought was really good. They also forced a pick six. That was a Landon Roberts had an 80-plus yard return on that one. Forced a few sacks as well, and then I thought they played really well on third and fourth down as well, specifically on third down, trying to get the Raiders off the field. The numbers might not reflect that overall, but when it comes down to it, I think this defense was only keeping Miami afloat in this one, and that's the biggest deal, right? This defense is known as one of the elite defenses in the NFL, specifically the secondary, and you had a difficult matchup of trying to guard Darren Waller, probably the second best tight end in all of football, and you put guys like Byron Jones. You had Xavier Howard on him as well. And overall, outside of a catch here and there, and especially a long catch in overtime to Byron Edwards, I thought the defense really helped keep this, deep, er, this offense and team afloat long term. But go back to school for me. Rate the Raiders defense versus Miami. Obviously, that should say Dolphins. But scale it 1 to 10 for me. What does the Miami Dolphins get for you in this one? Scale it 1 to 10 for me. Man, this is going to be tough just because they did give up a couple of plays here and there that were a little bit disheartening in terms of the concern level and everything like that. But overall, I thought that Miami played really well on defense. But if you haven't already, hit that big red button for me. That's what I want you to do. We're trying to keep you in the know on the Miami Dolphins all season long. I get it these past two weeks. Um, well, one, the game was over pretty quick. This week, you stayed in it all game long, going into overtime and losing on a heartbreaking field goal there in overtime with just a couple seconds left but we're trying to keep you in the know all season long on your Miami Dolphins things are going to get better and we'll be here to report on them giving the latest news and rumors on your fins all season long all you got to do is hit that big red button and subscribe to Miami Dolphins today Jalen Phillips rookie outside linebacker listed as an edge rusher made a pretty good showing in the desert six tackles was really surrounding by the ball the whole time was always around the football had some pressures as well good to see him finally pick that up a little bit I know it's early on in his rookie season happy that he's healthy but when it comes down to it Jalen Phillips is going to have to take that next step if the Dolphins defense wants to take the next step because they need somebody opposite of Emmanuel Ogba and Emmanuel Ogba played good today, having three QB hits and one tackle, but he always seemed to see, be in the backfield. That Raiders offensive line, much like the Dolphins offensive line, is a, an abysmal unit. Count the tracker on there, Trace, producer Trace on that one. That's only one abysmal for this show, but it's the truth of the matter, right? And they capitalized on that wreaking havoc on Derek Carr. Now, you have to tip your cap to Derek Carr, especially on that throw to Brian Edwards in overtime, an absolute dot over two defenders for Miami, but... I love seeing the pressure get to Derek Carr, make him make difficult throws. If Miami can do that and have opposite pass rushers of Ogba and Phillips, and that can progress all season long, you have something there, especially with that secondary that has the best, duo, the best duo, excuse me, of cornerbacks in the NFL. Jalen Waddell also stood out. We talked about one rookie earlier. Jalen Waddell was hyper-targeted. I hope you started him in PPR leagues. I did not because I'm an idiot, but... He did have 12 catches for 58 yards, and it looked like he was the security blanket of sorts for a majority of the game for Jacoby Brissett. Good to see that they had that rapport early between a rookie and a veteran QB who will be at least playing for the next two weeks as Tua Tonga Bailoa is on the short-term IR. And you love what you saw from Jalen Waddle. He's making guys miss, but he wasn't afraid to go over the middle either and really get in there and take a hit or two. 
You love what you see from him. Now you want to get those deep balls caught. And really, Will Fuller, he missed a couple, but I thought Jalen Waddle was the standout when it comes to strictly wide receivers. Obviously, Mike Gusecki led the way for the Dolphins as they lost in the desert 31-28 to the Las Vegas Raiders. Jacoby Brissett and, oh man, Raider report over here. Mitch just pumping the Derek Carr jersey in my face. Absolutely ridiculous. You know that was P.I. in the end zone on Will Fuller. Mitch, don't even lie. Should have had a touchdown opportunity right there for the Dolphins. But unfortunately, the Dolphins fall to 1-2, and two, losing 31-28. Jacoby Brissett looked great, as I mentioned, from the midway point in the fourth quarter into overtime. But overall, a loss is a loss. You're one and two moving into week four. A lot of positive signs. The O-line has to get better. But again, heartbreaking loss in the desert for the Dolphins. Before we get out of here, be sure to hit that big red button and subscribe to Miami Dolphins today. Your one-stop shop for everything news and rumors for Miami Dolphins all season long. I'll be here trying to keep you updated. Maybe talking a little trash in the comments. Hope you're doing the same. But let's keep it classy. Hit that big red button to stay in the know on your Miami Dolphins all season long.